Okay, and we're here. It is the Converge Report with Mike Thomas. It's June 19th uh, on the Thursday. Uh, we're right here uh, uh, broadcasting or live streaming from the Downtown Windsor Business Accelerator through Nockstrom Digital Media on Xyz TV and the best live internet programming in Windsor, Essex, and that's what we say and that's what we believe. So, uh, you know, we took a kind of break last week. We kind of had like a little like post, like not post, a pre-election show. Uh, and it you know turned out really really well, uh, but I'm back here with the regular convergence report, and I'm going to take you through some things um, tonight in regards to, and I'm going to tell you it's Facebook karma. It's all about Facebook. It's all about karma. It's all about what I see on the internet. That is what the convergence report is all about. Uh, we are going to take a look at a quick election recap. I'm talking a little fast right now, and I'm going to hope that my co-producer Alex is going to give me enough time to get all this in today. Because uh, we're going to look at the again the recap. We're going to look at uh, Rob Ford the musical. <laughs> I just I, I say the same thing each week. I said if it wasn't Rob Ford, I'd have no show. And of course, um, I, you know, I, I really kind of did a dream job theme today because like dream job is really a part of uh, the Gavirch Report. So I'm going to try to get in as much as I can in regards to the dream jobs. And one of the dream jobs you really need to take a hard look at as they're starting to kind of drum it up. One election's gone, another election's coming. Who? Who wants to be the mayor of Windsor? But we'll take a look at all that in a minute. And please, I'm going to tell you again, subscribe to our YouTube channel uh, to Nockstrom One. Okay, take a look at it, search it, be a subscriber. We're well above our twenty-five thousand dollar, our twenty-five thousand viewer. Uh, are we up to? I don't know, Alex. You have to help me out here. Are we getting, getting close to thirty? Are we getting there? Kind of creeping a little bit, but you know what? We are getting there. So subscribe to our YouTube channel. Watch it live when you can, because live is best. Okay, you're gonna get me straight. Everybody can say, Mike, Mike, are you using a teleprompter? I'm saying no, I'm not using a teleprompter. You're getting it straight live, live stream again on XC's TV by Knox from Digital Media. So again, please take a look at us or take a look on YouTube and, and see which what part of the show you want to see. Watch the whole thing. And like us on Facebook. We really want you to like us on Facebook, kind of drum up our views that way. Please share us, please move us around. Uh, tell people on Twitter that you know what you want to see the Converge Report and Betty on the go. And uh, Beyond Incredible with Ashley Nicole, and of course, Jock Talk with Brett Hedges. So make sure that you're looking at our full lineup going forward because we're getting ready to explode. I keep telling everybody that each week uh, um, at the production meetings. So it's all about, I call it Facebook Carmen. And it, you know, it's almost a dangerous, dangerous thing, this Facebook. Uh, it's a thought police that tells you what to do. And people say, oh, no, it doesn't tell me what to do. Oh, yeah, it does tell you what to do. And of course, when I say I saw that, I saw that as being part of karma. It is because. You know whether it's a news agency, whether it's a whether it's an everyday person or just a regular Facebook poster. Okay, once you put it up there, I saw that. If I'm following you, I'm getting the information. And again, I get from emails. I get from all kinds of different news sources as I try to make sure that I try to research all the information and to be able to present it to you in a, I'm going to say in a a a very entertaining fashion. That is what the convergence report with Mike Thomas is all about. Um, and what happened, you know, I got, you know, what once I was, uh, uh, Violet uh, Azinabar, she was kind of, you know, she kind of helps me out from uh, each week and she kind of pointed out, you know, what was trending. What was trending was what? What was trending was, uh oh, Facebook went down. Okay. But the thing was, us North Americans didn't really know too much about it unless you're one of those late night or those night owls and stayed up all night. But actually, Facebook went down and all you had is a little sign. You can see it on the TV uh, behind me, the screen behind me was, some, sorry, something went wrong. The message ready for, Ready for those trying to log in? We're working on this as, as, as this fixed as soon as we can. And um, the, the, the actual statement I got was from uh, the Herald Sun from Australia because, of course, they would have known what was going on immediately. And they're talking about everybody went to Twitter. And you know, it's kind of funny when it said share this story. It said go to Facebook. Okay, well, Facebook might have been up or down or not. Of course, Twitter, LinkedIn, or LinkedIn, Google, and, of course, use your email. You want to use the email to, to send this story out. But really, it was everybody kind of went to Twitter to find out what was happening on Facebook. So here we have, at least we had a backup social media. I guess that's really what it was about. We had a backup social media because Facebook, it definitely was down for about a half an hour. They said about 6 p.m., okay, uh, with, a, with a message. Thousands headed to Twitter, it said. With a big hashtag, of course, whoop, we're so lucky we have the, to be able to the search mechanisms or the uh, search engine search engines that was Facebook down hashtag Facebook down is what they're saying. And it was a, and it was a moment of silence for those who didn't know what to do with their lives because Facebook was down. But this happened. It happened today, and everybody was kind of wondering what had happened. So I think we're still trying to find a research. But you couldn't update your posts. You couldn't put your pictures up there. 
life, life for the social media aspect, life stopped for everybody that uses Facebook. And it, you know, it said most users in the American slept basically in the American slept throughout the outage. Um, it said about 40 minutes in France. Um, access and traffic were also impacted in many other countries, including Russia, Spain, and England. And basically, that is what happened. And this was the Herald Sun again. Uh, business news is where it came from. But that was the big trending news today. How could something as, you know, and then we kind of look at the conspiracy theory side of it. And was it just a test? Was it just a test to say, you know, social media, again, going back to the Occupy Wall Street, uh, Occupy the World, when Blackberries were going down? And, and was it just a test to see if they could shut Facebook down? Was it glitch or was it a test? I guess, I guess we're going to find out going forward. There's lots happening on that side of the world. There's no doubt about it. So anyways, do watch out. I hope everybody's okay. I hope everybody's not going to sue because their life stopped. And Facebook, again, worth, but what, 15, was it 15, uh, oh, 15 billion dollars it's worth, okay? So don't sell your stocks yet. It was just a glitch. Uh, <laughs> available in 70 languages. So, I, again, I, I kind of was saying today, I, I'm really kind of looking at it that my dream job is really what today's, uh, today's Convergence Report is all about. And it's really the aspect of what we consider to be the dream job or the people I'm going to talk about going forward is what they thought their dream job was or did they have their dream job before. Um, some people's dream job going going this is going to be in Rob Ford the musical. Okay, <laughs> and this thing is really happening. And on Monday, June 16th, there's a whole bunch of people flocked to Toronto, you know what, and wanted to be part, uh, you know, anybody that looked like Rob Ford, looked like Rob Ford a little bit, um, it's going to be a two-week show that's going to run from September 16th to the 28th at Toronto's uh, Factory Theatre. And you already know that you know, if it's not sold out already, it's going to be. And just like the bobbleheads, you'll probably buy your tickets on, on eBay for about double or triple or quadruple the price. So you know that's going to happen. And so here we go, Rob Ford, the musical. And I don't know. They said there's all kinds of people, whether or not they were local, uh, local uh, disc jockeys. Uh, local celebrities, just regular people, all trying to be part of Rob Ford. And this was reported in Viral Global News. I kind of like that, okay? And it says, and it really, it was, Rob Ford, the musical is coming. Are you ready? I wonder if Rob Ford is ready. Or, you know what? He probably wanted a piece of the pie or a chunk of it uh, if he was trying to do, you know, do the red carpet in Hollywood. So maybe this will be his, his next start after he loses as mayor. After he loses as mayor, maybe he can be an actor. <laughs> he can maybe get a part. He can get a part in the Broadway reproduction of Rob Ford the musical so I guess we'll wait and see what happens there so I guess that there's a whole bunch of people wanted maybe yeah you know, maybe this is dream job I mean he's gonna skip mayor now and move on um, and this will take me right to uh, the political side Hang, of things hangover, hmm? Hang, which one Hang, hangover the Rob version. yeah hang over <laughs> hang over the Rob Ford version that will be the movie thank you Alex thank you very much for telling me all about that but yes okay there we go um, well, you know, I'm just going to take everybody through this. I'm going to say it's the dream job. Uh, you know, this was for our social media aspect. There is no doubt this was probably a more crazier election uh, than we've been used to in a while um, in regards to the charades that went around it. Uh, I don't think the political, you know, I don't think the political uh, uh, commercials were, were as bad as I thought they were going to be. I actually expect them to be a little bit worse. Uh, but uh, from we're going to talk about the polls. Well, I'm going to talk about the polls. I'm going to talk about everything that kind of led around to what happened in the end. And what happened in the end was major uh, was a liberal majority. So you definitely know, looking at it, you definitely know that as far as Kathleen Kathleen goes, Kathleen Wynne goes, she got her dream job. She got her mandate. She's not just was a kind of interim premier. She was elected premier. She uh, was elected in her riding, and now she she runs the show. Uh, and, and that is a majority. And, and, and when you were looking at the polls, they were actually predicting a majority liberal or majority conservative. That's how close they said it was. Or, or and there's some people, I'm saying in my political vein, where you kind of, you know what, I believe government works best with a minority, and that didn't happen. So she, she was able to run a campaign with all the crap that was thrown at her and be able to pull off a majority. And there was some, and I tell you, it, it one, one who took the biggest hit. We're going to find out in a minute. It's going to be little Tim Hudak, Tea Party Tim, as they call him, as far as what happened to him. So his dream job actually crashed. And whether or not his dream job was being the pseudo-premier, okay, that, that's what he thought he was. He thought he was premier of Ontario. And now and we're going to find out in a few minutes as I go forward where, where he's not even going to be leader of the Ontario PC Party. 
So his dream job is going to change or going to go back to what it used to be. Andrea Horvath, um, you know what? I'm going to I'm going to say it straight up. It straight up was that uh, there are some people that are saying the NDP did the right thing, that there was a referendum, that there was so much crap uh, f again flying all around uh, the parties that you know actually uh, a government or business in the government couldn't be conducted because of the the shadow of Tim Hudak and because of the bantering between the NDP hold or propping up. Uh, the Liberal Party, but it will be looked back on in history as whether or not it was a smart decision uh, by Andrea Horvath to whether or not that she, like they, she might have, you know, it, we're, we'll look at it. We're in Windsor, oh, all orange, okay, but there were other, other significant, you know, they, the way she was talking, she was going to be winning this election, and it really was more status quo for the NDP at the end, and what she lost is her dream job of being in a position of power to influence power, to make a difference, okay? If I'm going to tell you right now, if there was any other person probably being premier, and we're going to actually see, just like a Stephen Harper scenario, how Kathleen Wynne reacts with a majority, with a, with a power, to whether or not she is going to live up to her words and saying, I will take care of business in Ontario for all Ontarians. Uh, so let's hope that she does that, because I'm telling you right now, if it was Dalton McGinty and it was a couple of other people that they could have thrown up there, at a, or a Dwight Duncan, that right now, you know, this would be a whole different scenario for the people of Ontario. So again, her dream job is is, is what? So and and she's danced around it. I guess the party has to discuss it. Will there be a leadership review? I guess they have to take a look at that down the road. A lot of people are saying that she did the right thing, but to lose that kind of power, is it really the right thing? Okay. I guess your your accolade would be that you deflated def deflated Tea Party Tim Hudak, and that's what you did. And and I totally understand that. Um, and Michael Schreiner, um, what it was for the Green, it really even looked like they had a seat there for a little bit, uh, but they really did do well. They act, they really increased their their total uh, 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 vote count, uh, I think about 4.7 percent. So that was very very important for the Green Party to make those kind of strides in Ontario uh, with their platform and their party platforms and everything. So so as far as, like they can't say it was a loss for Michael Schreiner, but they actually did really increase the. Uh, um, everything for the green so you got Kathleen with the power you got Andrea going back to being okay just kind of barking barking in third place from having a position of power to barking in third place we'll see what kind of influence she will be able to have or the party will be able to have uh, going forward so and we'll talk a little bit more Tim when we get there and here's really what it was about and 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 this is the 308.com and again they went with the equals polls the Ipsos polls I'm not gonna name them all off and here they were saying it, and, there's, and there was a lot of people, like I said, the best, the best election coverage that night was Steve Pakin on TVO uh, with his show, The Agenda. Uh, that's the one I watched. I kind of flipped to the other channels, but I flipped back because he had some really good guests, Dwight Duncan, uh, Christopher, Chris Stockwell uh, with the PC flavor, and, and for life of me, I, 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 just, I know that they're the more high profile, but I thought his coverage of the election was very good. They made sure they made sure. They were not making false predictions. They were really trying to stay true, but they were really in tune to what was happening. And who's not in tune to happening now, they're defending it now. If you go to 308.com and you read their little spiel about the election and about the polls, well, our numbers were pretty close and our numbers were this and we, we got to hit the averages. Well, they were not projecting majority whatsoever or this type of majority, and they were not, not predicting a deflation of the of the of the PC party in this particular election there was no doubt that did not happen so you're kind of looking at you know 36 36 seats okay where actually actually they they came we're nowhere close close to that uh, 49 seats and then 22 for the NDP and let's see what really happened and it was 58 a drop down to 28 seats um, again I just this is the true productions now um, they're, they're saying it was low high I don't remember seeing the 54, but I guess they were saying on May 12th they were kind of looking at that. But they it, they were kind of playing around with this back and forth. They're saying, but there's no doubt there was actually a shock in watching the election coverage to see how the Liberals took control of this election. Took and, and really, it wasn't whether or not who they shut out here and there. There were some major seats lost. The one in Burlington that was lost. Uh, with um, I believe her name was Jane McKenna, and it was uh, you know a seat held for 40 years by the Conservatives. 
Okay. Oh, and you're going to talk to Ruth about Bruce in a minute. But um, this is what um, this is really what it was. It was a, it was more of a shocking result. If you looked at all the analysts, they were kind of they're going, I, "This is unbelievable. I can't believe the vote tally. I can't believe what's happening. I can't believe that the PCs fell as flat on their face as what they did." So that takes us, of course, back you know to our local programming. Our local coverages, and we need to. We need to. And this has been in the news. And this is my first kick at the cat, okay, or kick at the can, to talk about this. And we have, you know, it was a, it was no doubt an orange sweep in Windsor, Essex, uh, with Percy Hatfield, uh, Taras Natashak, okay, and Lisa Gretzky. And we'll, I, I can look at the numbers, okay. It was really, as far as Hatfield went, it was kind of a walk. He, he, there was no doubt. He did an excellent job. He, he was very in the forefront over the Parkway. And challenging the Liberal government, even though they were in a position of a minority and a, a minority government, and whether or not they were supporting them, propping up, or whatever, he still took them to task and saying, "We got some problems here. We need to take a look at that." Okay, and so, but he did really do. He really did a really good job. Well over 22,000 votes. Uh, Jason Dupuy of the Liberals was about 5,500. Uh, not really close. So, like, he, they're calling him the conscience of Ontario, and you know, you listen to him talk. He said that, he, like his position was, his position was quite clearly that it seemed that Ontario needed this referendum. He called it a referendum. Needed a referendum on the gas plants. Needed a referendum on the liberal decisions of, that were affecting government. So, so if anything came out of it, I guess the people of Ontario have spoken. That they don't want to hear any crap anymore. They just want government, government to govern. I guess that's what they're trying to say, and they're trusting Kathleen Wynne is the one that can do that. Uh, Taraz Natashak, okay, uh, it, you know, it started, when you were first looking at him, you went, holy cow, this is really close, but no, he, again, another, another, uh, another MPP, um, uh, never, MPP that's really done the job, and it's really reflecting his vote count, well over 28,000 votes for himself, okay, and, you know, next closest candidate was Ray Cecile, the PCs, with 10, so, you know, whether they had a newer candidate for the Liberals, they weren't looking at that riding so much, or, or, they, I get, don't forget, in Windsor, it was really kind of v down, okay, to try to protect the Ter Teresa Perusa riding uh, the winds of Windsor West, and so you know what they kind of left the other ones kind of to hang out to dry. I hate to say that, but that looks like what they kind of did. But they kind of ran some good candidates, gave them a chance to get started in politics. We'll see if they run uh, going forward uh, uh, down the road. And uh, before I yeah, I should hit this one, and the other one I really wanted to look at when they really talk about we got we need to talk about Chatham Kent. Talk about Chad and Kemp with Rick Nichols. Rick Nichols cruises to a second term of office, and this is really, if the, if you look at the strategists or the strategists in regards to when they talk about this thing called strategic voting, there was no doubt. Okay, between the Liberals getting about nine thousand votes and the NDP getting about eleven thousand votes, which 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 was totals to about twenty, so those two parties had about twenty thousand votes. Okay, if it split one way or another, Nichols was easily plucked. Whether or not it was Liberal. Or whether or not, uh, whether or not it was the NDP, and I think to myself, this was just a kind of a forgotten riding that they didn't want to really want to. They didn't concentrate too much effort in, and they let them split the vote, and Nichols got up the middle, and that's how basically how I see that. So they say second term, yes. So I, I tell them, I'll tell you right now, with any type of plan in uh, in Chatham Kent, this would have been different, and I'm going to that. So 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 we got a little orange, a little blue, and we don't have the red, and that's why I kind of put that one in the middle. And this is the one, and I kind of reading it right off in the Windsor Star, and it says Gretzky stuns Perusa. You know, I, you know, I kind of, you know, I don't, I don't think there was a stun here. Every political analyst said this one was tight. Um, they really looked at it whether or not there was name recognition built in, or the fact that Horvath came down so many times, or that she, I'm not going to say right, right on the coat, like you know, she was a school board trustee, but when you had the tremendous support of Percy Hatfield. And Taras Natashak, okay, and they had the time to do that because they, you know, the polls would have indicated their their straw polls would have indicated that they were pretty strong. So you basically had three people pumping for one, okay, and Teresa Perusa, yeah, she had she had Kathleen coming down trying to protect this one. I don't know what a Duncan might have done. I don't even know if Sandra Pupatello would have made a difference um, because you know she's kind of left and moved on, and people recognize that that has happened. But it was not a stun. It was not a stun at that. It really, truly was. Uh, I'm going to say, you know, a little bit more than a thousand votes. Okay, so she was disappointed. There was no doubt. She was a minister, and people were in a panic over whether or not that that 
that what's going to happen to Windsor and Kathleen Wynn again. This is we talk about election promises. She pledges to take care of Windsor. She pledges to make sure the hospital gets here. She pledges to go through with her budget, which included all of that. Let's make sure those things happen. That's where we got a Percy Hatfield. I believe he has the credibility and a Taras Natashak to make sure those things happen. I don't know where Nichols sits at all. They're they're kind of in a whole disarray. Uh, what we're looking at as far as going forward. And so that takes me through most of all of that. And so I'm going to say my dream job is, I don't know how much I'm going to try to get as much in as possible. Five minutes. If you always just tell me five minutes, this is going to be a quick, this is going to tell me about a quick five minutes. So so anyways, this is, don't look at the one little slide there, but this is, I'm going back to, you know, he's going to go back to his old job, Tim Hudak. He was going to stay. Now he's leaving because he's basically having, it, the caucus is basically kicking him out, saying, you know, we can't focus until you are gone. He can go back to his old job as a Walmart manager, okay, where he can just he can fire a bunch of innocent, hardworking people, okay. Walmart, low wages, low morals, morals, always, okay. Remember that, Mr. Hudak, million job plan. You just created one, and that's how it is. And people say, well, is that that true? Check it out. It's on his own online profile. I got that from Kevin Wycraft. He went to the University of Washington, Seattle on a scholarship, getting a master's degree before he got into politics. Okay, one year later, he was working for Walmart as part of a team of managers that took apart all the old Wocos and made them Walmarts. Okay, and then once he was done that, then he became MPP. So check it out for yourself. And, okay, and thought for the day as far as his big million job plan. Look at this. This, this was, again, sent to me. I was, I was picked up from uh, uh, some of, one of my Facebook friends. And it was Costco's profits jumped 19 percent, and here annual average cost for Costco workers 45,000. Walmart's about 17.5. Why can't you pay? Oh, come on, Tim. Okay, you can pay people, give them decent wages, decent pay with benefits, so they can live a life. Okay, I guess you know what people saw through your plan, and that's why you're done. Okay, Mayor Windsor, going to do this really quick. Okay, here we go, <laughs> Mayor of Windsor. Okay, and he's gone. He didn't want to be. That's a dream job. It wasn't his dream job anymore. He's going to Windsor Family Credit Union. Okay, uh, Haberstadt, no. Sleeman, no. Uh, uh, oh God. <laughs> Bill Maher came out today. I don't want it. Okay, he wanted it a bunch of years ago when Eddie beat him. He doesn't want it. He stepped back with his family reasons, or he's got himself set up a certain way. He says, I don't want to be it. Okay, uh, Joanne Geniak is no. Uh, Valentinus is no. Okay, and oh, I knew I was missing Ron. Uh, Ron Jones is no. Okay, Eric Kuzmerchek, uh, you know, I give him all the credit in the world. He just got in the by-election, give him a chance. Okay, I think the guy that really wants it, I think the guy that really, really wants it, okay, is uh, is Al Magne. Okay, <laughs> but when you kind of play around with credit cards, it kind of takes away your total credibility. And now we're waiting for, we're now waiting for a new one. Initially, Delkin said no, but now he's back on the, on the heater saying whether or not it's going to be him. Okay, whether it's going to be him or not. So what they're actually talking about, what they're actually talking about is, and there's a face, and it's begun. The social media has begun. Is whether Teresa, I got two minutes. Teresa Perusa, whether or not with, and you know what, with her, with with her allegiance to Kathleen Wynn or Kathleen Wynn's allegiance to Perusa, will she be the best shot at mayor for Windsor? Can she still get things done? Because that's what she said. Putting Windsor first is what she talked about. You know, it was a very close race with Lisa Gretzky. She was not blown out. Uh, she, you know, she's going to sit down with her family and talk about those things. But you know what? Is she the one going to be uh, uh, for next mayor? And if you if you're not kind of if if you're not sure yet, remember your three candidates so far for the city of Windsor is Ernie the Bacon Man, okay, Timothy Dugdale, okay, and Raymond puts on Ray puts on. He was in the Windsor Star, but you know he'll protect your your snowy sidewalks, okay. But Ernie the Bacon Bacon Man. So are they going to make that decision? And I want you to go. I want you to go again. It's some, a site that I had found on Facebook. Okay, vote for question mark. For your next mayor, I want everybody to take a look at that. It's on Facebook. They're trying to get a nice, polite discussion. You know, keep it's not to promote stuff. It's not whatever. It's like your discussion of Windsor people on who you think should be mayor. Use your social media. Talk about it. Okay, go for that. Check it out on Facebook. You need to do that. And a couple quick things. Bob Probert's ride is this weekend. They raised good money. Okay, Danny Probert had a letter out. Three hundred thousand dollars they've done to date. It's going to be Jacqueline McInnes Wood. Uh, actress, singer, DJ, and television host is going to be the captain of the ride and her sister. So, you know, it kind of helped out there and do follow that ride. If you can't ride a bike, then get out to the Riverside Sportsman Club at the end of the ride and support them there. And one that's important to me is called Jerry's Jester. This was put in the Windsor Star. 
by Carol Derbyshire, Executive Director for the Hospice of Windsor, and they just had an event. It was well supported. Uh, a fundraiser to Kaboto, fifteen thousand dollars was raised, and I needed to put that in. Or I have that. It was a, and and it was hospital. And Jerry passed away a little while ago, and he just you know let you know that that kind of support. Donations from Unifor Locals 2444 raised $2,500, and that is a really good thing. And this has been the Convergence Report. I'm Mike Thomas. I will you know, spread out my time a little bit better. I will see you next week.